Well, uh, Damien is very well prepared and actually the change of opponents came in a awkward time, I would say, uh, 12 days before the bout. We were pretty much uh, already with travel plans arranged and everything and I had a game plan ready. And uh, obviously it came as a bit of a worry because we were not certain they would get a replacement in time for this card. And uh, uh, Bisping is a big name. It would be a great fight, a fight that we wanted. Uh, because he's a great fighter and because it could uh, catapult Damien back to a headliner position, which is uh, obviously everybody's goal. Um, uh, we got a, a lot worried and the, our main priority was uh, not to get him out of the Fox card, which also means a lot for his career. And with this headliner status, I mean, doing the press conferences and all that, uh, which is where he belongs, in our opinion. So. We stayed a, a number of hours on the phone with Joe Silva trying to figure out a solution and he did a great job. Uh, Chris also uh, deserves major props for stepping up, you know, realizing the opportunity and taking it by the horns. And I think it's an equally tough fight. I mean, Mike is a proven fighter, awesome fighter with a great record. But Chris is uh, also very talented and on his way to being an established, proven fighter like Michael is. So I think it's uh, also a very hard fight, a very tough fight. Um, with an undefeated guy who will come uh, full of, uh, of beliefs, you know, believing in himself. But uh, obviously we got to fight tough guys to move up and uh, being in the Fox card is great and we couldn't waste this chance. Yeah, there's always a, a, a kind of a risk involved. I mean, obviously fighting a, a top contender, a, a, a well-known, famous worldwide guy like Michael Bisping would be, uh, let's say, more of a win-win situation for Damien. But at the same time, there are no easy fights in the UFC and uh, who knows, uh, if uh, we wouldn't take this fight, maybe uh, we would be thrown in a minor car like a, a fuel or FX car or whatever, you know, to get him fighting. And we wouldn't want to throw away all the training camp, all the months of training, all the psychological aspects involved, and uh, more so losing the opportunity of being in such a main important card with great names and on Fox Live. You know, I think. Uh, in the end, uh, props to the UFC for making the fight happen. Obviously, they would prefer to have maybe some other options, but it wasn't possible. I mean, Chris is legit. People uh, bill him as a future contender, as uh, one of the best, most talented guys. So he stepped up. I mean, why not prove and uh, try to figure out who's the best fighter? You know, props to him. Uh, usually, I like to say that when people see uh, problem there's also an opportunity you know and Chris saw it this way so we did so let's go it's gonna be a great fight yeah Shogun is uh, pretty much uh, getting back to training taking some time off uh, I think that Dan Henderson fight was a very hard fight um, not only that but uh, he had recently fought in UFC uh, Rio uh, against Forrest Griffin so two shows too close to each other two training camps close to each other takes a lot on the psychological aspect so he needs some time off now he's starting to train again he's back with under Adida who is the guy that uh, coached him for the Machida fights so let's see what the future brings if it's up to me I mean we'll like to fight in June or July when he has time to really be ready and all the fans want to see Shogun at top form so this time let's take our time and get him hundred percent in the best form he can be uh, yeah actually uh, ring rust is always a factor and Shogun got sidelined for a long time due to injuries but uh, after that I mean uh, we had a very tough training camp for the Dan Henderson fight. He had uh, some injuries uh, during training camp. We had to adapt a lot of things. It was very brutal on him, required a lot of effort, and uh, doesn't take anything away from Dan, who's a legend. But we know that Shogun at 100% can perform uh, much better, and it's, it's up to us. I mean, we made the decisions. You know, it's up to us to this time make sure he gets uh, in the best shape of his life and uh, comes back in his best form against whoever the UFC offers and puts in front of him. Well, not, I have no idea yet. I think UFC is uh, waiting to see how the cards play out. We have a big fight coming up between uh, Rashad and Phil Davis. Uh, they, this will affect what happens with John Jones as well because Jones might face Rashad or he might face Dan Henderson, depends on how the puzzle you know, adapts. And at the same time, there are other tougher guys in the weight class, or tough guys in the weight class, like Machida, who is waiting to see what happens. There's the fight between Lil Nog and Alex Gustafsson until June or July, one of them could be, you know, like a main contender. It's tough to say. I would get, I will get a lot of 
of fire for saying that. I have said it before, but personally, I would love to see uh, Shogun fighting Tito in his retirement match because I always like to add uh, a legend to his resume. Everybody uh, bugs me, but because it seems like I'm trying for an easier fight. Obviously, uh, in theory, fighting a more ranked, a higher ranked guy can be tougher, but uh, when Ryan Bader fought Tito, everybody thought it was an easy fight for Ryan, and he ended up losing. Tito deserves a lot of respect, and Tito called Shogun out a number of times in the past. So we, we never started to uh, uh, mention a fight against him before he started to talk about it. We have the biggest respect for his legacy, and that's the reason why we want, we want to add this legacy to Shogun's resume and uh, obviously being his retirement fight, being the legend that he is, it's going to be a lot of PR and a lot of marketing involved. But it's not up to us, you know, it depends a lot on the UFC, what they want, so let's see what happens. Yeah, and actually let me just uh, say one more thing. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't mean when I, when I say we would love to have a fight against Tito, it doesn't mean that we won't take fights against other opposition, you know, like before the Henderson fight I said the same. We never expected them to offer us Dan Henderson. We took the fight, so, you know, uh, maybe, I mean, depending on what happens to Rampage in, the, in Japan, Rampage could be a great fight as well. It, it depends. I, I just wanted, I know Tito just has one last fight left, so we want to be part of this before it's gone. And as far as the guys goes, I mean, Ninja is retired as a professional fighter. He took uh, uh, part in so many battles through the years, so he deserves some uh, family time with his kids. He's doing a lot of seminars traveling around the, the world in Brazil, uh, teaching uh, MMA and, you know, taking a little bit uh, of the love for the sport. He embraced to fans and to pr practitioners around the world. And now we have a string of up-and-comers coming up. Uh, we have some guys uh, trying to get in the Ultimate Fighter Brazilian Series, which would be great. And uh, hopefully we'll have some surprises very soon. Unfortunately, I can't reveal much uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, but uh, we're excited. I'm also starting to work with Wilson Reyes, who is a former Elite XC champion and a very good guy. Moved down to 135 pounds. So uh, hopefully he will be coming to the UFC soon. We'll see. We're trying to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough fight. I mean, it's a fight for the ages, one the fans wanted to see for a long time. Uh, I'm happy that the UFC booked this, these guys on the show because they are both great characters, you know, there's a history behind it. So it's going to make for great ratings. I think Vitor is going through a great phase of his career. He is, uh, seems to be very focused, very motivated and uh, uh, found some maturity, you know, with his training again. Uh, I would say that in theory he would be at a better moment with some uh, odds on his favor, but Vanderlei, who is a friend of ours and our idol, it's uh, very well known for uh, rising to the occasion, you know, and uh, uh, making, proving his, his worth when people don't believe him anymore. So I think he might very well rise to the occasion. It's going to be a barn burner and uh, might sound like some uh, BS politics, but uh, the winners are going to be the fans, you know. Uh, I would say, in theory, right now, Vitor is in the best, better phase. But uh, I think Vanderlei has always the, 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 the heart, you know, the guts of the, of the warrior. And uh, he always steps up, so I wouldn't count him out. Right now, Brazil got to a level uh, as big as Canada or the US or the UK or anywhere else, even, even bigger maybe, because I'm having, a, I measure by the fact that I'm having a hard time walking with those guys on the streets in Brazil now than anywhere else in the world. So uh, it really got a lot of attention. The Ultimate Fighter is going to be in the biggest network in the country that gets like 70% of the share of the TV ratings. So it exploded. It's huge. Uh, it's uh, only behind football. And I think uh, uh, it's a matter of us to make good use of it. You know what I mean? We worked hard to get this kind of recognition. Uh, now there's a lot of people trying to get on board and work in MMA, people that have no idea what it's all about. So it's up to us to educate people and uh, make sure we make the best use of the opportunity and make the sport grow. And, uh, you know, I mean, UFC Brazil now was crazy. I think the next one in June is going to be in an open door stage and soccer football stage in Sao Paulo is going to be even crazier. And I invite all the fans from everywhere to go there and experience it because it's really a crazy ride down there right now. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody for the support, to Shogun, to Damian Ninja and all our guys. Hope to be able to go to the UK cards soon again and see you guys. Thank you.